With many of Roblox's highest valued limited items, the gap between their wrap and Rollamon's value can be pretty large. After all, Rollamon's values are supposed to just be a simple way to denote an item's rarity and desirability in the trading community. Without them, items like Bling Boy's Rhymant, which people have given items like Teal Sparkle Time Fedora and Emerald Valkyrie for, would go for just over 100k. Big items are often sold for much less than their value as a result of account hacking or USD buying, so it should be no surprise that sometimes that gap can be pretty large. But what if I were to tell you that the item with the biggest value to wrap ratio on the entire Roblox catalog actually has a wrap of literally zero. Over all of this item's lifespan as limited, it has not been sold or even listed on the catalog even once, and yet it's one of the most valuable limiteds ever made at 3 million value. How did a limited item like this even happen? Well, to answer that, we have to take a deep dive into the history of one of the oldest, weirdest, and most cult-followed items in all of Roblox, the Kleos Aphthaton. The year was 2007. Roblox as a company had only existed for two years, the community was still very tightly knit, and the Roblox engine was still extremely primitive. As a result, anyone who was capable of creating a game that would even be semi-competent by today's standards was pretty much guaranteed to get famous. And this was no better exemplified than in the case of Mike's Ultimate Paintball. You've probably played Capture the Flag style shooting games in the past, and Ultimate Paintball was pretty much the first version of that type of game ever created on Roblox. The goal was simple, to get your team the most points by capturing the other team's flag, killing other players with your paintball gun, and standing in the white spot in the middle of the map. Because it was so new though, the community went wild for this game, pushing it past 4 million visits and getting it to be the most popular Roblox place overall until 2009. However, 2007 was really its heyday. In fact, it was so popular back then that around mid-July, Mike talked to the founder of Roblox, Shadletsky, and asked him if he would be willing to run what would come to be one of the first official Roblox events ever in Ultimate Paintball. And after hearing his ideas, Shedletsky agreed. The event would be called Mike's Ultimate Paintball Tournament, and it would be run like a standard paintball tournament with several brackets of matches that would be played over the course of around a month. It would involve 32 teams with varying amounts of members. Each day, starting on July 24th, two of the teams would participate in a 30-minute match, and at the end of the match, the team with the most points would be designated the winner. After the first 16 matches had been played, all the winners would battle each other again. The winners of those matches would battle each other again. The winners of those matches would battle each other in the 45-minute semifinals, and the last two winners of the semifinals would take part in one one big hour-long match for first place. When all was said and done, the members of the third place team, the Monstars, got 500 Robux, the members of the second place team, the Rogues of Robloxia, got 1,000 Robux, and the members of the winning team, the Super Mario Strikers, got 2,500 Robux, a year subscription of Builders Club, and an incredibly rare off-sale hat called the Paintball Tournament Trophy. After the Paintball Tournament was over, Shedleski thought it was a resounding success. In his blog post announcing the winners, he said, the Roblox team wishes to thank Mike for managing the tournament. When Mike told me his contest idea, I silently cringed at the amount of work that would be required to organize a cross-continental teamed paintball tournament. We're going to be sending him a little something as a thank you for sticking with it. Because our first user-run contest was more or less successful, we're more likely to have another one in the future. And have another one they did. In fact, two days before even announcing the winners of the paintball competition, on August 15th, 2007, another even more high-stakes tournament would be announced. Roblox Grand Melee. The Grand Melee Tournament, just like the Paintball Tournament, would operate via a round-based system, but it would work differently than the Paintball one. Instead of formally entering the competition, all you had to do to start fighting in this tournament was join this special empty base plate place and start swinging your sword. For two days, the place would remain open, and you could fight as often as you wanted. At the end of the two days, the top 64 players with the highest kill-to-death ratio, the number you get by dividing your total kills by your total deaths, would move to the next round, provided that they had at least 50 kills. Now, if you're like me and you were wondering what would happen if you were so skilled that you had zero deaths and had to divide by zero, take a look at this lengthy bungee forum post that explains that if that were to happen, your KDR would be infinity. At which point, I'm assuming the Roblox servers would explode and the Roblox down tag would go trending much earlier than expected. Anyway, after round one, the 64 qualifiers would move on to round two, which was apparently supposed to resemble Mike's paintball map, but I guess it was wiped clean at some point because it's just a base plate now. This time, only the top 16 highest KDRs would move on to the final round, but they only needed 25 kills to qualify. And after all that, it was time for the final round. Two of the players that ended up in the final bracket, Telemon and Clockwork, were actually admins and were only there to troll the actual competitors. And the 14 real players that made it to the end were Meon, Predator, Koopa, Grillox, Cheesy Pop, Noobertuber, Stealth Pilot, Super Loco, Kashi, Dirt Rider, Nintendo Wii 4, Han Solo, TR Zanji, AMK 152, Shane the 13, 
and the Yoshi Crusaders. The match took place over three days, ending on August 26th in the specially built Coliseum map, and provided that they got at least 50 kills, the players with the top four KDRs would be the overall winners of the tournament. Now, at this point, I would like to show you a snippet of the fighting, and luckily, there was a bonus prize that could be won in the tournament by making the best YouTube video with footage of the final round. Let's take a look at one of the entries. All right, welcome to the Grand Melee. Uh, this is Wellen. I love this retro style of like reporting. Like, I I've seen a few old videos from uh, Roblox past, and it, 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 they have this unique style where they don't say anything; they just put words on the screen, and it's so funny because no one does that anymore. Okay, we got some fighting going on. Uh, that guy is moving. Uh, he has a rocket launcher. Uh, oh, and we're on something else. Oh. Yeah, uh, I forgot to mention, this arena has deadly walls on it, so that you can't get into the fray. Alright, so now we got an aerial view of a fight, and this goes on for several minutes. Uh, we got some building... Oh. Keep the camera steady. Oh, missed him. Oh, missed again. Uh, I believe the players fighting here are Nintendo Wii 4, Telemon, and Mian. Uh, and they're kind of in a triangle at the moment. Ooh. Oh! If we were dealing with real physics today, that would have they would have been hit so many times. Did someone die? No, no, someone didn't die. Someone just dropped a bomb. These are really, these are really strategic fighting uh, strategies. It looks like, looks like they know what they're doing. See, like no one is using their sword. Everyone is using the ranged weapons, which I didn't think yet. Oh, Telemon's gone. Yeah, well, Telemon isn't even competing, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. Oh, God! Someone exploded. And I believe, uh, according to him, that kill was Mian. Right, now he's uh, shooting some slingshots at no one for no reason. Uh, and I'm not sure what's up with his rainbow filter, but we're just going to go along with it. He's trying to hit that person over there, but the wall is in his way. Not sure why he's doing that. Nice uh, fraps.com watermark, I just realized. Ow, and he died again. Alright, this is a new round, it looks like. Oh, and we're, we, it's already chaos. Oh, God. Uh, did... Are they blocking rockets with bombs? That's a really cool strategy. I never thought about that. Yeah, they're they're throwing bombs at each other and they're and they're throwing rockets at each other and they're using the bombs to block the rockets. Look there. That's interesting. What? God. How are they firing the bombs at each other? I didn't know you could do that back in the day. Someone died, I think. Oh, he's back. He has respawned. Oh, God. He survived. That man just had two rockets get fired at him, and he somehow lived. I don't know how that's possible. Oh, kill. Uh, competitors here, I believe, are Stealth Pilot Mian and Kashi now. Uh, and everyone except Kashi was a winner. I noticed CP rules in the spectator leaderboard. I think I recognize. I think I recognize him from somewhere. Noticing that the bombs are all multicolored, that's kind of interesting. He lived. People are dying to the 
invisible walls all the time. And... Uh, come on, come on. And the credits. All right. Uh, nice video, Wallen's World. I think you deserve the win a lot more than the person who actually won, who used music that sounds like it was made by a monkey on drugs. Nowadays, the arena is still open and has remained largely unchanged except for the entrance to the fighting pit being blocked off. Fortunately, Shedaletsky was kind enough to uncopy lock the map, so I took care of that problem. So while I'm here, let's talk about what happened next. After three long days, four players emerged victorious. Koopa with a KDR of 4.20, Cheesy Pop with a KDR of 2.74, Stealth Pilot with a KDR of 1.84, and NuberTuber with a KDR of 1.33. The prizes were as follows. NuberTuber won 500 Robux and one month of Builder AETM's club. Stealth Pilot won 500 Robux. Robux 1000 ticks and three months of Builder AETM's club. Cheesy Pop won a hat of his choice from the catalog and six months of Builder AETM's club. And Koopa won a hat of his choice from the catalog, an extremely rare off sale hat called the Black Iron Crown of Ponage, and 12 months of Builder AETM's club. Oh, yeah, and also all four of them won the Cleo Saffathon. Cleos Aphiton was that undecided event hat that Clockwork talked about in the announcement article. It's a retexture of the Coef of Glory, which has a pretty complex origin story in itself. I talk about it in my Void Star history video, but for this one, suffice it to say that around the time the Roblox Grand Melee tournament happened, this was a pretty popular hat, and since the tournament was themed to ancient Greek fighting, it only made sense for the prize to be a retexture of a Greek warrior helmet. The Aphiton wouldn't be the last retexture of this particular item either. In fact, you can get pretty much the same look by wearing the Cleos Themis, which was sold in the 2012 Black Friday sale for 250 Robux. The Cleos Photanos, which was sold in the 2013 Black Friday sale for 50 Robux and is currently limited, and the Coef of Excellence, which can actually still be purchased today for 900 Robux. But because it only had four copies, nothing could really compare to the glory of the Cleos Aphiton, not even the original Coef of Glory itself. For a very long time, the Cleos Aphiton stayed as simply an extremely rare off-sale item, getting awarded periodically to a few different people for various reasons. It isn't really known who got their hands on a new copy of this hat after the event was over, or why they did. All we know is that by 2017, when it finally did go limited, there were 10 copies of this hat in the owner's list. But that doesn't really matter, because 10 copies is literally the same as the current premium circulation of Dominus and Pyreus, so it still had some real clout to it. And the trading community knew this, because as soon as it went limited, everyone and their mother started incessantly contacting those 10 owners to try to get them to give up their copy. And surprisingly, a good amount of them did. Unfortunately though, in some cases, the people who didn't give up their copies willingly had them taken forcefully. Remember NuberTuber, the fourth place winner of the tournament? The person who worked so hard to get through three days long rounds of elimination against Robloxia's best sword fighters and somehow miraculously came out victorious? Well, his account got compromised, and his Kleos went to a burner account called 42B8WTPTEY8, which treated it to sorting algorithm and started it circling through the trading community. They even took all his other limiteds as well. 4 million value, which according to the current devx rates, translates to 14,000 real life dollars, gone in an instant. And NuberTuber's case isn't an isolated one either. According to the Rollamon's Discord server, Kleos is pretty much an account compromiser magnet nowadays. Hero of Time 101, Jarblox, and Hoopa Unbound, to name a few, all lost their entire inventory of limiteds while holding it. It's almost like this is a cursed item that preys on the innocent souls of whichever poor Roblox account it happens to fall into the hands of. Or maybe people just really want the rarity. Regardless, despite all that comping, Cleos has, interestingly enough, never been sold once, and it's the only limited item with more than one non-Roblox owned copy that that's ever happened to. Maybe that's because it's relatively new as a limited compared to stuff like Dominus Empyreus, maybe it's because it's much less well known, or maybe it's a combination of those reasons. All we know is, for now, Aphiton has a flat wrap of zero and it'll probably stay that way for the foreseeable future. So for now, that's the tale of the Kleos Aphiton. How do you think you would have done in the Roblox Grand Melee? Personally, judging by my average performance in Sword Fight on the Heights 4, I think I probably wouldn't have even gotten past the third round. Anyway, I've been Lord Nitrous, and I'll see you all next week. Bye!